Hello everyone, hope that you all are doing well. By the thumbnail you might have understood that in today's video, we will implement OAuth 2.0 with full registration and login module, integration with Google and GitHub. OAuth 2.0 with full registration and login, what does that mean? Well, we will be developing a module which will allow you to register on my application. That is, you are okay allowing me to store your complete input data with password as well and also giving you an option to directly log in in my application using Google or GitHub and in that way I will not have the access of your password, your actual password. So now as the uh, theory is being explained, let us jump to the code part. Uh, but before that, if you gain knowledge out of my videos, do like, share and comment on my videos. And if you are new to my channel, do subscribe and press the bell icon. Now let me explain you the code. Let's go class by class. Let me uh, show you the structure of the code first. So we made OR2 in the previous video where we were directly implementing OR2. And whenever we are hitting any end point of our code, uh, we have to uh, authorize, get authorized through Google, right? So our third party was uh, Google which was authorizing us uh, in the previous video, right? Now what, now we will be having our custom login page where we'll be giving option that you can log in through GitHub also as well as from Google. And if you are not willing to log in through Google or GitHub, you can go and register yourself on my application and then log in through those credentials. So let me show you the code part. So we have different packages first. So let me first take you to the application, the main application. Right, this is our codes for main application, right, a simple main application. Now let us uh, go to the model, model package. Now uh, as I said that you are, we are storing a user in our database, right, we are uh, giving you a, a way to register also on my application and then login also. So when you are registering, your credentials would be stored in my database. So to store those, I have made a user entity and a role entity. So user and role have a uh, mapping insight, right? User has a mapping of a many to many with the role, right? So that you know that that we did in the previous videos as well, where we uh, explained that how uh, user and role mapping works, right? So this is a very simple kind of an uh, mapping we have made in user and role. So this is our model package, right? So now uh, the table structure would be like in the user, there would be an access uh, to the role as well, right? So uh, right now I'm storing uh, whichever user comes to my application, I'm storing the role of that user as a user only. So there is no admin access to this application right now, right? So this is my model package where we have these two entities. Then we have our DTO package that is our data transfer object, right? So this is my user login DTO, which is uh, somewhat same as our login, uh, sorry, user entity. And then this is my registration DTO, which is same as my uh, registration entity, right? Registration means that, okay, there would be uh, data that would be supplied to me from UI when the user comes to my application register itself. So these were the, these will be the details that I'll be storing. So to take that uh, data from the UI to supply to my entity, to store it in the database, we need a DTO, right? So we are using data transfer objects. Then uh, let me take you to the uh, repositories. Uh, repositories are actually uh, our DAO package, right? So repositories are actually uh, the point which gets connected to the database and uh, it enables us to perform operations on the data in the database, be it fetching, uh, be it uh, inserting data. So these are my simple repositories. I'm not going in deep because these are already been discussed in some previous videos, right? So these are my repositories. So now uh, let me take you to the config package where we have spring security configuration. So here you can see that uh, everything remains same as we did in the uh, video of two, two step verification video where we uh, also enabled the user to send the OTP to the mobile or to the email and then verify that uh, OTP and then allow the user to log in. So everything remains the same uh, till here, right? Everything remains the same. The changes are in the filter chain method, 
so filter chain method how uh, what are the changes let me show you uh, what we covered in the previous video so in that video we did a simple change in the filter chain method which was just allowing the uh, allowing any request coming we have to authorize that request through oauth2 login right so we were uh, any request that lands on my application we were authorizing it through oauth2 login now what we are doing is we are saying that okay uh, whenever slash login or slash registration uh, urls are fired we have to permit them right there is no authorization required to land on those pages but when the login is being done right then after the login the success handling is being done through success handler right we will be the, we have written a custom success handler which will be handling the success that whenever uh, we have put in, we have input our email id we have uh, entered our password and then we click on submit so that success would be handled by our success handler that is our custom success handler and then what we are saying that okay uh, for logout the success is slash login that when we have when we have clicked on the logout button uh, the success for that is that it will take us to slash login page again right so and now as i said that we'll be enabling uh, the login through github and google as well so how that has been done is we have again taken that okay if there is an or two login request right if there is any third party login request then also the success has been handled by success handler right now what we say that okay our custom login page would be shown to the user whenever it goes slash uh, it hits slash login but then uh, the success handler would be uh, the custom success handler that we did we that we have written right uh, whenever there is a login success from either google or github or from our custom login right so this is our uh, spring security configuration that tells you that okay uh, this is how the flow of the application would uh, run right now uh, just before jumping to the uh, other part to the success handler let me first take you to the pom.xml of the project so here in pom.xml so we have written these two dependencies right we have had added these two dependencies which has enabled us to have our custom login and registration module as well and also allow user to log in through google and github right so these are the two dependencies that i have added in the uh, pom.xml right so now uh, as the spring security configuration are clear pom is clear let me now take you to the success handler and let me explain you the success handler first so let me go to custom success handler so now uh, what is the scenario like uh, like when uh, you have uh, entered your email id you have entered your password on the login screen when you click on submit then what will happen is it will take me when the uh, request is successful it will take me to the on authentication success method right uh, in the custom authentic custom success handler so here what i have checked is okay if the uh, authentication dot principal is of type default over to user right now there are two kinds of uh, user that would be registered with the authentication dot get principal right when there would be an entry through a user which has registered on my application through registration and then is trying to log in then that type of user would be spring security dot core dot user right so that uh, the class of that user would be user and when the user is logging login through uh, google or github into my application then that type of user class is default o or to user right i'll tell you the differentiation when we'll uh, go to the dashboard controller where we have handled the display of the username on the dashboard and how we are differentiating on a default o or to user and a user core user right so what what i have done is okay if the authentication and dot get principal contains an object of default over to user then i have to find the principal object right i have to find the user details that is default over to user and then i have to find the username now the, you can see that okay i have uh, applied a, a if condition here that okay user details dot get attribute email is not equal to null right if it's not equals to null then i have to give it uh, as user details dot get attribute dot email or else i have to get the login now why is that required because 
uh, when I talk about when I talk of Google, right? So Google provides us an object, a complete object, wherein the user's password is not supplied to us, but his email ID, his name, and everything is being supplied to us. So I get the details of that user through user details in the email, right? I need the email here. So I get through the attributes of email. But when we talk of GitHub, GitHub doesn't provide you uh, the email directly. It doesn't provide you the uh, name of the user directly. So there is one key in the user details that is the principal object login, right? Login is the key where we get the name of that person who's logging into the system through GitHub, right? So login provides us the name when we log through login through GitHub and email is uh, provided by Google when we log in through Google, right? Now I have written it as I'm storing a dummy data. So I, am, I have added at the rate gmail.com just to make you clear that, okay, this is, we are finding email here. So now I have the email now, right? Now I'll check in my repository, in my table that, okay, for user with this email ID, is there any entry in my table? Now, as the user is logging from uh, Google or GitHub, I won't have any entry of that user in my table, right? But just to uh, make my application a little and when you log in to display your name on the application and perform all the operations on your name. So I'll store your name, email ID, making it a dummy data, right? Now exact email ID is being provided by Google, but it exact email ID is not being provided by GitHub, right? So what I'll do is I'll take a DTO object and then I'll add the email ID as the email ID that I have taken, right? In case of uh, GitHub, it would be at the rate gmail.com every time and Google supplies this, uh, the email ID. So I have added the email ID and I have written the name as well, right? Uh, here also I am uh, seeking name from uh, the email only, right? So here is the name as well and uh, the password is dummy. As I said that we don't get the password when we are giving the access to the third party, right? We are giving access to Google and GitHub that, okay, I don't need the password of the user. Just that you confirm that, okay, the user is present on your database. If it is present, then I just have to give him access to my application, right? But I need some data to store into my database, right? So I am making all data, dummy data and storing into my database on the name of that particular user who's logging through GitHub or Google, right? So password is dummy and the role is user. And then I am directly saving the user, right? Into my database. And what I'll do is we'll, uh, after all these things that I've saved the user and I've checked that, okay, it is from Google or GitHub. Now I have to give a redirect URL as well, that after the success of this, where the system should redirect to the user, right? So it is slash dashboard. So the user will take, uh, after login, the user would be taken to the slash dashboard, right? So now what is slash dashboard? Let me take you to the controllers now. So let us discuss the controller part. First of all, let's go to the registration controller. It is simple, right? Uh, when we click on slash registration, when we uh, go on this URL slash registration, it will uh, display me a register HTML. And when the registration is successful, it will redirect me to the login page, right? Re uh, registration is successful means that it will store my data into the database, right? So all these things are going, uh, saving and everything is being performed in the user, uh, service default user service, right? If you can see here that, okay, uh, this is load user by username that is used for logging the user. And then, uh, save method is called here to save the user into the database, right? So this is, uh, this is, uh, the default service, default user service. Now this was the registration controller, right? Whenever we click on slash registration, when we go on slash registration, uh, it will, uh, give me a register application. I'll put my all data and submit, and then it will take me to the slash login page. Now let's go to the login controller. It is also simple that, okay, it's, it's slash login. I have to display the login HTML and when the login is successful, then I have to take it to the dashboard, right? Uh, when the load user username is successful, then I have to, the transaction is successful, right? So after that, 
uh, my success is being governed by slash dashboard right so it will take me to the default success handler right uh, according to the spring security configuration it says no that okay if the login is success then it you have to take it to the custom success handler so now custom success handler again tells that okay you have to the user would not be of uh, type default user or OAuth. It would be of user type. So you have to directly take it. Uh, you have to the redirect URL value would be slash dashboard and you have to take the application to slash dashboard. Now what slash dashboard contains is let me take you to the dashboard controller now. So, okay, now slash dashboard what it contains, right? So uh, we have the spring context, right? And we can find the uh, principal object from the spring context, right? So what we are checking here, again, the same if condition that you uh, saw in the uh, custom success handler that if the object is instance of default O or to user, then I have to find the user from the uh, all those uh, things that user dot get attribute name user dot get attribute name user dot get attribute login if this is the condition that okay i have to send the user name to the uh, home screen right uh, to the dashboard screen so how that would be visible so i'm adding a model here so i'm adding user details to this value right this is my user details is a key that i'm using in the html and i have to add the value so again th that if condition is being applied here that okay for google we get it from name uh, but for uh, you, but for the uh, GitHub, we get it from login, right? Else, if the user is of type user, now you can see that this is this user is of Spring Security Core User Details dot user, right? Whenever the user is of Core Details dot user, when it would be of Core Details dot user, it would be when the user has registered on my application, right? And now is trying to log in, so that user would be of core right uh, user details dot user right so we have to find that okay if that is uh, the user of user core then i have to find in the database what is the username and then send that username to the dashboard html right and then return the dashboard html so now let me take you to the html part as well so the code part should be complete and then we'll run the application so let me take you to the resources folder and let me take you to first the registration html so that's a simple uh, form type html where you can uh, just a minute So this is my registration HTML, right? So this is just a normal form, right? Wherein we are getting users name, email ID and password, right? And a submit button here. So this is my registration. This is my login HTML, right? Simple login HTML where I have given two links uh, of one of Google and one of GitHub. I'll tell you that how to generate the secret ID, client secret uh, and client uh, ID of GitHub also, right? So this, these are the URLs that we have uh, given to the user that whenever there is a click on Google, uh, it will be authenticated through Google. Whenever it is a click on GitHub, the, the user will be authenticated through GitHub or else you can enter your email ID and password and click on submit, then we can authorize it, right? So now what is what dashboard HTML contains is, it's a simple right i have to display your name so you can see that i have taken that key here the user details key so your name would be displayed here and nothing else welcome to my channel and please subscribe so these the, these are my code changes of making a custom uh, login registration module integrated with google and github also right so the third party uh, access is also given in this. So now let me tell you that how you can generate uh, the client secret and client ID for uh, GitHub. For Google, I have already covered in the previous video. You can go and check that. I will put that link in the description as well. So let us go to the github.com, right? You have to go to github.com. Then you have to go in here and go on settings, right? 
in settings uh, down you will scroll and you will get the option of developer settings click on developer settings then click on OAuth app, apps right click on OAuth apps now already one has been registered on my application now I have to click on new OAuth app and there uh, the form uh, is open right I have to enter the name right ABC could be anything then uh, we have to enter our uh, home URL that would be HTTP localhost 8080 right and if you want to give the description you can the callback url again this is uh, the oauth uh, github that, that is actually the fallback uh, url right so this is my fallback url right so whenever uh, the fallback url means that okay when we click on the authorization through github that i want to log in through github then uh, on what uh, URL it should re redirect to that it can authorize you right through GitHub. So this is the URL right now uh, I have to click on register application right when we register application client ID is directly visible right just that you have to click on uh, generate a new client secret then your client secret would be visible when you enter the password here right so let me enter the password and let me tell you that okay it is visible i've entered the password so you can see that okay our client secret is also visible client id is this and client secret is this so this is how you can generate your client secret and client id through github as well where we have input the client id and client secret of google and github you can see in the application dot properties as well these are my database details right and these this is my google uh, client id client secret and this is my github client id client secret right so we have input these so now let me uh, run the application as the code has been already discussed so let me go to the main application and let me run the application we'll uh, try and log in through uh, google as well as github so yes my server is up you can see that uh, create table queries have also been fired as the tables were not existing so let us refresh the tables column as well that okay tables are visible or not so okay the three tables are visible that is user role and user role right this is a mapping table right the third table that we discussed in the previous video as well so this is uh, now my server is being started uh, so let me take you to localhost and let me click on login first right so if i click on slash login so it will display me a page where it has given me an access uh, to login through google as well as github or I can enter my email ID and password. But first, first what I'll show you that I'll register a user through my application, right? I'll register a user like uh, Raman Singh, right? Raman. Right, and my email ID would be a hypothetical ID. Right. right now I don't need a perfect ID. So my password will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'll click on register. So now when I click on register, it will take me to slash login. Right. So now uh, my one user would be registered. Right. Let me uh, run the query. So let me run the query on my table. That okay. My one entry is being done on the not. And we are using password encoder, so the password would be encoded, uh, encoded and saved into the database. So you can see that password is encoded and saved into the database, right? So now let me enter my email ID, and this is my email ID, and let me enter my password as one two three four five, and let me log in, right? So look, now this is my dashboard where I can see that okay, hi, welcome, Raman and uh, welcome to my channel please subscribe right this is the way that you can log in through a custom registration right uh, you have registered yourself on my application and then you are trying to log in through those uh, credentials now i'll log out right and uh, i'm back on uh, login so now let's uh, we have already uh, registered the user through our registration and we have tried to log in through that also but now let's try to log in through google and github now let's try to log in with Google first. So I've clicked on login with Google. Now it has taken me directly to the login page. Now our application. Now I click on my email ID. Now it will ask me for the password. So I'll enter my password. So I have entered my password now. 
so it will uh, take me to my dashboard application right it will take me to the dashboard and it says hi welcome Raman Preet Singh and welcome to my channel please subscribe and let me now log out again now let me take you to the database as well now you can see that I have have entries of the users as well okay this is the user that has uh, come to me through Google so I've stored the name as email ID only and email as email ID and the password is encrypted this is a dummy password so that is an encrypted dummy password so now let me click on login with github so this is the uh, github fallback right so now it says that okay login through github now I'll say java tech w2022 and I'll enter my password I'll enter my password and say enter so now yes it is redirecting me to the dashboard so now it has taken me to the dashboard and it says Java hello welcome Java tech world so this is how you can actually use the uh, Google github Okta Facebook on each and every platform there is a developer tool from where you can generate a OAuth application where it will generate an OAuth application and give you a client secret and client ID which you can use in your application and give access to users through login through github okta any other application which gives access to the developer tool right so this was uh, the complete uh, registration and login module with integration with google and github and oo2 implementation in that so this was it and hope that you people like share it to this video and if you are new to the channel please subscribe to the channel and do press the bell icon i'll see you in the next video till then happy learning